Hey guys, Johnny Lane, CrossFit Intense here. I um, want to go over the 12.4 uh, uh, wad and uh, cover a few things. Uh, dealing with this workout, but first touch on uh, some of the stuff that's uh, going on for this weekend. This weekend, don't forget, uh, Sunday, 5 p.m. is your cutoff for posting your max deadlift. Um, go ahead and, and mark the as prescribed um, box because we've had a lot of issues with that on the 12.2 uh, workout with people not hitting that and that messed up the scores had to go back in and fix a lot of things and um, just get in the habit of using that it's not going to matter on the deadlift of course everybody was prescribed get in the habit of hitting as prescribed if you did it as prescribed um, i will fix all the uh, the scores as they come in i know a lot of them are not posting to the results that is, uh, it shows up in the athlete's history. I can go back in and find it, so you must post. It tells me when you posted, uh, what your numbers were. It's all right there in your own, own words and your, what, what you've actually entered yourself. But, uh, I think it flies in here. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's, uh, um, it, it's something I can go back and, and research and put in. It's a little manual work for me, but uh, uh, make sure you do take care of that. Don't wait till after Sunday or five after Sunday or whatever to email me and say, hey, if it didn't show up, I can tell if it was there or not. Um, all right. As, uh, as I mentioned, the prescribed stuff, we, in this workout in 12.4, we do have a non-prescribed version of it, and um, it's crucial that you guys hit RX, uh, the hit as prescribed, or um, uh, leave it off if you didn't do it as prescribed. I will not fix those again have enough uh, um, uh, investment into your own workout to fix that hit as prescribed and that uh, score will populate correctly. All right, and um, we'll go ahead and kick this thing off uh, with the, uh, the workout. The 12.4 will be a 12 minute AMRAP and these will be as many reps as possible. We're not gonna necessarily count rounds, we'll count total reps. The rep scheme is 10 wall ball, 10 vertical, perfectly vertical kettlebell swings, and 10 toes to bar. Um, we'll go over each movement, the standards, a few little things about the, uh, well, each one of them that is not uh, necessarily new, but um, it is uh, gonna be a standard across the state for everybody. So I wanna introduce, the, this is the mayor, Dan Fisher, from CrossFit Intense. He's gonna be our demo guy. We're gonna start with the wall ball. Now on our wall ball, you see I've got, uh, in this area here, that, that line that's painted black at the top there is 10 feet. The bottom of that line is 10 feet. What he's got to do is, of course, squat below parallel, standard on the wall ball. If he shallow squats, that would be a no rep. So he's going to squat below parallel, throw the ball into the, uh, the black area, and touch the wall. Now, in this case, he threw the ball above the black area perfectly fine, but the ball must touch the wall, must be above the mark. So if he were to have a good squat and throw half, about halfway up into the mark, so he touched the wall, but he was way shy. He was probably around nine feet or so. Squat and threw the ball about halfway into the mark. In that case, I didn't see any black underneath of the ball, so that would be a no rep. He didn't get the ball high enough. Must get past the 10 foot mark. So 10 feet, the entire ball, 10 feet or higher for that ref to count. That is men and women. Um, the weight will be a 20 pound ball for men, 14 pound for uh, women, and uh, we'll have some uh, a modification for that. I do want to go over the no reps though. We just went over the fact that he didn't get the ball high enough. The next one would be a shallow squat. So, uh, ball's a little shallow, but definitely a shallow squat. Crease of the hip and not get below the knee, so that would be a no rep on that. Um, one thing we're going to throw in here that's a little different on the wall ball is if he were to, if he's in the middle of his 10 rep set, he throws the ball, it's a good rep, but he doesn't catch it for whatever reason. Drops it, intentionally drops it, whatever. Um, he throws, the ball drops it. He would complete one burpee. Now, the standard on the burpee, typical standard burpee, there will be no, no reps on the burpee. He's gotta just do the burpee, whatever it is but it is only one, and that's if the ball touches the ground. And that's setting it down in the middle of that 10 set, um, a 10 rep set, or anything, any variation of that. Now, if he is, uh, is tired, say we've done rep number five, and he needs a rest, he can hold the ball on his chest. So he's caught the ball, he holds the ball on his chest, he rests there, or to pin it against the wall. Nothing wrong with that. 
He could put it on his head, uh, just as long as it doesn't touch the, the ground, even if he sets it down. The only time that it's okay to touch the ground is on the 10th rep. If he throws it, it's a good rep, touch the wall, he walks off onto the next movement. That's fine. That was the last rep he's done with that set. He can move on. So um, what we would run into in, the, in an area that people are going to have to be cautious about is say he gets a good throw, maybe he doesn't touch the wall or whatever, he walks away, the ball hits the ground. The judge would have to say, come back, you must finish the rep, and you owe me a burpee and they would do the burpee immediately and then get that final rep, make sure it's a good rep, and then they could move on. Um, outside of that, that covers the wall ball. The non-RX height will be eight feet, and that's for men or women. So if you can't get the prescribed height, we'll drop it down two feet lower and go eight feet. The weight stays the same, though. It's still a 14-pound ball for women and a 20-pound ball for men. No variation there. The eight-foot height is the non-RX. Um, and uh, that, that's, um, that's going to be the standard across the board for, uh, for everybody. Again, crucial. You hit the as prescribed box if you did it RX. If not, you won't get credit for it if you wait till uh, after Sunday to contact us. Moving on from here, we will do the uh, kettlebell swing. This kettlebell swing uh, for men, um, for men, 24 kilogram. 52.8 uh, pounds, 53 pounds. If you have a 55 pound bell, of course that's fine. A 45 or a 50 would not be legal. Uh, for women, 16 kilogram, 35 pounds. If you got a 36 pound bell or anything, any sort of variation above 16 kilograms, that would be fine. But it must be at least 16 kilograms and at least 24 for the men. So uh, Dan will, of course, uh, get his bell. He's going to show a good rep here. What we want is we should be able to see the ears on the other side of the arm. They should be perfectly vertical. He's got a good rep there. Good. Now, arms are straight. I understand there may be some issues with uh, uh, some elbow issues that can't get the arm perfectly straight. That's, that's on a case-by-case -case basis with the judge. You know, that, that stuff is, is fine. Main thing is, is that we stay perfectly vertical. So if he were to uh, do a swing, your head. He pops his head forward. The bell is staying out here. He's not perfectly vertical, so that would be a no rep. He's got to get straight up and down, and the uh, ear showing on the other side of the arms. On the other little thing we're going to throw in here, too, no ghost uh, kettlebells. We're not even going to demo that. But on that last swing, or any swings for that matter, no launching the kettlebell. It's just crappy technique and, and uh, bad gym etiquette. So get done, set the bell down. Don't, don't just launch it. The um, last movement is the toes to bar. And, and for this one, there is no different weight. RX, non-RX will use the same weight. Everybody should be able to uh, get this 35-pound uh, uh, bell for the women and 53 for the men. Um, moving on to the uh, toes to bar. Now, a good rep, the judge should stand pretty much in line with the, uh, the bar, the, the pull-up cage. And um, Dan's going to demo a three good reps here. The first good rep will be toes to bar. Toes actually making contact with the bar. Next rep will be the tops of the feet making contact with the bar. And lastly is the bottom of the feet. Both feet simultaneously making contact with the bar. All those would be fine. Um, what we can't have is kipping uh, the toes to the bar and not making contact with the bar. So in this case, he got high, he might have hit his shins, but the feet did not make contact with the bar. That would be a no rep. Even though he's breaking the plane, still not a good rep. Feet must make contact with the bar. Now, another issue we might have is if the kip, if the heels don't break the plane back from the bar. So as he's up in position, he had his heels in front of the bar, of the plane of the bar, and now he's coming up and touching the bar. He's actually getting good contact at the top, but he's not extending at the bottom. He could either be on the ground and do that, or hovering in the air like he is right there. All that would be no good. He's got to get those heels back behind him. Now, with that being said, you could touch the ground to start, kick the heels back, 
and then come forward without touching the ground on forward motion, and that would be a good rep. Uh, if you have a shorter cage or a taller person or whatever the case may be. Touching the ground, kicking the heels back, not touching the ground on the follow through, coming back up would all be legal. Then um, if you were to do uh, the, the crazy thing we see sometimes of the, the feet uh, touching in a different order, where he kicks and hey, we got make two feet make contact eventually in different uh, timing. Uh, of course, that would be a no rep. Um, and that is um, everything on the uh, everything on the toes to bar. We do not have the only non RX portion of this workout. We will have is the wall ball and. Um, Mainly that would be for the, for the women who would throw the 14-pound uh, ball to the 8-foot mark. Um, we should have really very few non-RXs in this. So everybody, make sure, it's like the third or fourth time I stress this in the video, hit the prescribed box. If you don't hit the prescribed box and I don't know about it, um, Sunday, next Sunday before 5, then you will get the score of non-RX, and it will definitely hurt you. Guys, contact me if you have any uh, issues, questions. Uh, it's Johnny at CrossFitIntense.com. Um, the uh, events page on Facebook will all work well, too. Thank you very much.